welcome back to my bathroom and welcome to video four of the hair color series. Today, we're gonna be breaking down the differences between temporary, semi, demi, and permanent hair color. I'm gonna take you through what they are, what's the difference, how to correctly use them. We're gonna demonstrate it using a level one, which is black. And we're gonna go through why you would choose the certain color, especially for blending or covering gray. Gray hair. If you're joining me from cosmetology school, we are gonna be on page 670, 679, 679. Your keynotes are in the description box below, as well as the previous videos to this series. So the first colors we're gonna talk about are temporary colors. These are your hair mascaras, your wands, your sprays, your powders. These typically last just one time. Think of like Halloween fantasy colors and they shampoo out as soon as you get in the shower. The root spray we tried last week, yellow, that is a temporary color. Another good example is Shimmer Lights, the purple shampoo from Sally's. So here's one I actually picked up at Sally's. This is Zoto's Professional Age Beautiful Root Touch Up in Black. Can you see that? So this is my old weave. It was actually my favorite one. RIP. Woo! It smells like my grandma's house. So very quickly with this temporary spray, you can go from blonde to level one, 10 to one, black instantly. But as soon as we shampoo this out, it's going to disappear. They make a physical change, not a chemical change. And what I mean by that, back in with the paper. Now I'm not like an artiste or anything, but this is our hair strand, an enlarged, photo of the hair strand. It's made up of three main parts, all our little hair strands. The cuticle is the outermost layer of the hair strand. Think of like a shield. It protects everything on the inside. It's also see-through. So I remember this by thinking of clear nail polish. It's see-through, but it's protecting my colored nail polish. And it makes up about 20% of your hair strength. So it's kind of important that we seal the cuticle, which we'll get into later when we start talking about hair color. In the middle, we'll do this a funky line. This is called the medulla. The medulla. This is the innermost, innermost, innermost. I think it's innermost. This is the innermost layer of the dang hair shaft. A lot of people don't have a medulla, especially blondes, and it serves literally no purpose, so you don't really need to know anything about it. Now this layer in between the cuticle and the medulla, if you have one, is the cortex. I gotta work on my handwriting. This is the most important layer of the hair shaft because it makes up 80% of its strength. So if you have crap hair, it's because something is going on in the cortex, overprocessing. In this layer, the cortex, the red one, this is what contains your hair's natural melanin. Melanin meaning color. Let's just say you have a red hair. You have red melanin that's made up in the cortex that you can see through the cuticle. So when we're talking about temporary hair color, and this is again, your very nice hair shaft, ladies. Here's the medulla. When you enlarge the hair, it looks like it has these little feet, kind of like a jellyfish or whatever, these little feet. When you're taking the hair color molecule, molecules, I can't say that word y'all, molecules. When you take those from temporary hair color, these are the hair molecules, by the way, purple. It sits on the outside of the hair shaft. These big old balls just sitting right there. So it doesn't penetrate inside to make a chemical change. It's just making a physical change. It's like dipping your hand in temporary paint. Changes the color of your hand, but as soon as you go to the sink and shampoo it or wash it off, there goes the paint and it's back to your hand. Does that make sense? Yes! Now in with our semi-permanent hair color. These colors do not lift the hair at all. So if I wanted to do a root retouch to get my dark roots to this blonde here, a semi-permanent is not going to work. They can only deposit color, meaning they can either make it the same color or darker, but no lifting. That is permanent color or bleach lightener. Typically, you don't mix these with developer and they go on wet hair most of the time. A good example of a semi-permanent color is Brad Mondo's X Mondo. Oh, and this is actually my favorite color, lime green. I've only done a little strip of my hair, but it is gorgeous. So for this color and semi-permanent colors, you take this out of the jar, tube, can, whatever, and slap it on. You don't need to intermix it with anything from the jar to the head. Typically, these are gonna last about 10 to 15 shampoos, but that obviously depends on how frequent or how frequently you shampoo your hair. Here's what it looks like in our hair shaft. There's our medulla again. Here's our little feet, little toes, whatever. The hair color molecules, again, this purple stuff, they set on the outside just like the temporary colors, but some of them are small enough to penetrate through, creating a stain. 
Because there's no hydrogen peroxide or developer, it's not really making that huge chemical change, but it is working better than a temporary hair color, if you will. The cool thing about semi-permanent hair colors are they don't make that line of demarcation like my hair. You can kind of see how it's got a stark line. With a semi-permanent hair color, it will gradually fade with each shampoo. So instead of being it will be a nice, soft blend. Would it really recommend these for blending or covering gray hair? You can do a little bit of gray blending, but it's honestly, in my opinion, not really worth the effort. You would use a demi, which we'll get into in a minute. So the semi-permanent I picked up from Sally's is Color Brilliance, Color Ion, Blackest Black or One. Looks like this. Oh, and mine is already leaking. Perfect. As always with any type of hair color, you always wanna open it up. Oh open it up and read the manufacturer's directions instructions because they're all different okay gloves we've got invisible gloves towel dried hair 10 to 25 minutes perfect you take this out of the tube and you can apply it directly on the hair no need for developers and again most semi-permanent colors do go on damp hair so we'll let this process for the 25 minutes and obviously the more times you shampoo this the quicker it will start fading out. So the less you shampoo, the more it's gonna stay in. Moving on to demi-permanent color. And again, we've got this in level one, which is black. Demi-permanent hair colors are really similar to the semi-permanent hair colors in the way that they're not going to lift the hair. So I cannot lift my roots with a demi or a semi. That is permanent hair color. This is only going to deposit, make it the same color, or darker, not lighter. You do typically use a developer or hydrogen peroxide with demi-permanent hair colors. So it needs a buddy for this to activate or work. These are really good for toners and also really good for blending, not covering, but blending gray hair. I can't think of the most popular men's hair color. It's a hair color for men that's in a box at the grocery store, drugstore, whatever, and it doesn't cover the gray but it blends it. I don't think it's just for men. I don't know, but it still makes it salt and pepper, but adds a little dimension so you're just not full on gray. This is what this is going to do. It's not going to cover it completely. It's just if you want to kind of hide some of it or enhance a little bit of the gray, make it look more like a highlight, demi-permanent is a choice for you. For me, the only time I ever use demi-permanent is when I'm doing a root retouch on a client. So let's pretend we have someone who has black hair and they have 100% gray roots, okay? So we want to do a root retouch with permanent hair color because that covers gray 100%. So we'll go through, put one in with 20 volume for gray hair all over the root. Once we're done with the roots, we're gonna go in with a demi-permanent hair color, one end to match the top, and run it through the ends and let it process for 30 minutes all together, shampoo it all at once. Shampoo it all out at once. This is going to refresh the ends, the demi-permanent hair color. You don't wanna compact permanent hair color on top of each other all the time. So black on black on black on black on black, or whatever color it is. You don't wanna overlap permanent hair color. It creates buildup. It's hard to get out if you change your mind and wanna do a different color. So a demi-permanent hair color, color refresh, is a better choice to do on the ends of hair. That's really the only time I use it, and for toners, of course. Now back in with the paper, when we're talking about demi, or demi, however you wanna say it, demi-permanent, demi, whatever, here's your hair shaft, here's your legs, here's the medulla, here's the cortex. Remember, all chemical changes is mostly happening in the cortex. Cuticle is just a see-through part, the top coat to your nails. So when we're doing demi-permanent, we are usually using a hydrogen peroxide or developer. So this is making more of a chemical change. You have your color molecules right here with little happy faces, woo! And they're flying in there like sperm babies, woo -hoo! They have found a way in. They are able to seep through the hair shaft or the cuticle, penetrate in the cortex to make that chemical change. Some of them still sit on the outside, but a lot of them are on the inside. So when it shines through or goes through the cuticle, the see-through part, you're seeing the color. It's making more of a chemical change. It's still not as permanent as permanent hair color, but it's pretty dang close. Okay, so did my permanent hair color. Looks just like permanent hair color. I've always used it with five or 10 volume, but this is saying to use, yeah, 10 volume. And this is a one in a, which is level one black in neutral or natural, which means it doesn't really have too many warm or cool tones. 
but it has an A at the end, meaning it has a little bit of ash. Ash is blue. So this is basically saying this is a black hair color with a very mild tint of blue. Tin volume, where are you? We're using Pravana tin volume. It doesn't really matter if you intermix it, despite what the manufacturer's directions say. Of course, the hair color brand wants you to buy their developer. They're all the same. You'll be fine. Demi permanent can go on wet or dry hair. And when I say wet, I mean like towel dried, not soaking wet. Processing time for this one is 25 minutes. And you can see it's a little bit different from the others because it's not automatically full blown black. It's going to take a little bit of time for it to process and then turn black. Here's the demi. Lastly, we have permanent hair color, which looks like this, very similar to the demi permanent. This is actually a two VV. They were out of level one and two is almost black. VV is just double violet, so it's going to look pretty much black with a double dose of violet, so it's violet in the light, very pretty. Permanent hair color is most commonly used because it can lighten and deposit color at the same time. So if I wanted to do a root retouch, hypothetically, I could use permanent hair color or a high lift color series with a high developer or hydrogen peroxide to lift my roots and deposit a tone at the same time. Permanent color covers gray. So if you have gray hair and you want to cover it completely, you're going to be looking at permanent hair color. They are mixed with developers and typically used on dry hair and the developers can range from 5, 10, 20, 30, 40. If you want to get silly, double 40, 50, 60, yada, 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 whatever. I don't go past 40 because we're not making bombs, okay? We're changing hair color. When we're talking about the hair shaft, per, I don't even know how to spell that, permanent. Permanent hair color. Here's the hair shaft. Here's the medulla with no purpose. Here's the little legs. When you put it under a microscope, 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 yeehaw. When you put this under a microscope, it appears that it has little legs. Here's our hair color molecules. Woo, happy face. They have what's called aniline derivative. Aniline derivative. What the hell? I can't even say that. Whatever. I'll write it below. Basically, what you need to know are these are tiny dye molecules, and some people are allergic to these. In that sciencey jazz, this is what makes this hair color permanent when combined, of course, with hydrogen peroxide. Now, not to get all scientific. <laughs> They start off real small, woo, woo, woo. When you pair them with their buddy, this is hydrogen peroxide, and they're getting silly together, you and me, woo. They go inside the hair shaft, and they start swelling up, woo, here we go. Now we're gonna change this gray hair, we're changing it to red, we're changing it to red. Of course, some molecules still sit on the outside like the rest of the hair colors, but most of them, are living on the inside, having a good old party time. They're permanent hair colors. You can see through the cuticle, the outermost layer, the clear top coat to our nail polish. You can see that the color has now changed. Now this is bright A red, party time. And it makes a permanent chemical change inside the hair shaft. So in a sense, they get trapped inside your hair shaft. You could shampoo it hundreds of times, and for the most part, it will stay this color. It has made a chemical permanent change. Permanent hair color is great for blending or covering masking gray hair, but where it's not so great is that it tends to be a little bit high maintenance. For example, my hair. When it's growing out, it has that line of demarcation. It's very obvious on people that have blonde hair that have darker roots and on people that have darker hair that have lighter roots. You can see that line of demarcation. Permanent hair color Looks just like the demi. See, here's the demi tube. The semi tube again was a lot bigger because you need more, you're not mixing this with anything. This one is a one to one ratio. I'm gonna do it over to the side here. We're gonna go back in with equal parts of 10 volume developer. Now, if you're covering gray, you want to use a 20 volume developer. You want to soften the hair cuticle, the outermost layer. You need hydrogen peroxide to kind of like shake it up a bit so these hair molecules can penetrate through and change the cortex. The cuticle is protecting the hair. Nothing come in here. But you need to break that wall and get that permanent hair color in. Gray hair is crazy. It's like a cat whisker. It's very like you could put color on it and it will slip right out. You need that extra bump of hydrogen peroxide to really make it stick and stay. And I know I've mentioned this in another video, but I honestly can't remember which one. But if you're having a hard time covering gray, a good little trick is to take 20 volume developer, pretend this is a two, 20 volume developer, put it on dry hair, put it wherever you have gray, if it's all over, hell slap that all over. 
Let it process 20, 30 minutes with a cap over it. Shampoo, blow dry this out. This is gonna take you a while. Mix your hair color with, again, 20 volume. So hair color, 20 volume developer. Mix it together, then apply it. Let it process, put a bag over it, shampoo, blow dry it out again. That's going to really help open up and break open that cuticle so you can bust through with the color. Permanent hair color, and again, it doesn't look black right away, but when we come back and visit it in about 20, 30 minutes, it's going to be very black, very dark. We've got all our friends, we're gonna let them process. So it's been like 20 minutes. Here's the temporary, and let's go ahead and run water with it, through it, and see if it comes off. Shampoo on it. Starting to come off, because you can see the black. So after we've shampooed it, I didn't do a great job, but you can see it's back to blonde, temporary, one-time use. Here's the semi-permanent hair color. You can see it's a nice, rich black. Here's the demi, again, black. And here's the permanent hair color, which I didn't give it enough time, but you can kind of see what it was trying to do. It's obviously turning black, but I don't know if you can see that violet hue that it has here at the top. So it's gonna, it would, would be a very nice black if I would have let it process a complete time, but they're pretty much all black. So initially all of these look the same blackest black the only difference is how long they're going to last is it going to be a day is it going to be five to ten shampoos is it going to be three-ish weeks or is it going to be permanent where it's growing out and the only way to get rid of it is to remove it with bleach or to cut it out hopefully that made sense i don't know about it y'all let me know <laughs> that's it for this week hope you guys are well i can't wait to see you next time so make sure you subscribe click the bell i post a new video in this series every single week, usually on Sundays. So I will see you next time for something cool. Something cool. Gravel road, I've been asked to slow down. Fireplace, do you know?